So now we're at the point where FDR has become president. He's been elected, he's going to be inaugurated, and one of the first things he's going to say um, is that we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Now if you wanted to put a heading in your notes, which by the way you should be still taking notes, um, you could put something like FDR and the New Deal. Um, FDR, when he is trying to get New Deal legislation passed, um, one of the first things he does is he calls a bank holiday. Now, a bank holiday isn't what you would think it is. Like, we think, oh, a holiday where the bank is closed, like President's Day or M Memorial Day or something like that is a bank holiday. That's, that's not what this was. The bank holiday here is that um, all the banks in the country were closed for four days. Um, and this was part of the em Emergency Banking Act. So I put that in your notes. One of the first things he does is the Emergency Banking Act. Um, this closes the banks, all the banks in the country, for four days. Um, and basically he restructures the banking system so that uh, the banks that are failing are closed and so that those banks won't drag down other banks um, that may have been possibly able to stay open. Now, you may wonder why would he close all the banks? Well, under um, Hoover's watch, um, close to 10,000 banks go out of business. Um, I think it was right around 9,000 banks. That's a lot. Um, and so FDR didn't want any more banks to go out of business and he wanted to stop bank runs, which is one of the things that causes banks to go bankrupt, where they run out of money, is a bank run. Um, now part of this was though that he brought the country off of the gold standard. Um, so he recalled all the, go all the gold coinage that we had out in circulation. Um, and basically our dollars were no more, no longer able to be redeemed for gold. Um, and while he was doing this, he was also making sure that the banks that weren't able to stay open, basically they were closed and they never reopened. Um, another thing that you need to know about FDR is something monumental that a lot of people talk about with him is his first hundred days as president. Um, when Obama was elected, uh, people talked about Obama's first hundred days and tried to compare Obama to FDR. Um, they got the idea because of FDR's first hundred days. And FDR's first hundred days, um, what he did was he reconvened Congress. He called a special session. And basically, the uh, Congress stayed assembled when they were, they were in recess. They were, they were gone. People that are congressmen and women go home. Um, for breaks, and he called an emergency session. They all came back together, and he held them in an emergency session for a hundred days, basically, um, to try to get his New Deal legislation passed. Um, while he was doing this, um, he also developed something called the Brain Trust. Um, that should be in your notes. And the Brain Trust was just like a think tank where... Um, a lot of professors, particularly liberal professors or progressive professors, um, would advise FDR on what kind of public policy to make. Um, and it's interesting, like, nobody seemed to care, for the most part, what FDR was doing at first. Um, Will Rogers, who was, um, he was an actor at the time, a comedian, um, and this is a quote from Will Rogers about what FDR was doing. He said, just so he does something. If he burned down the Capitol, we would cheer and say, well, we at least got a fire started anyhow. So <laughs> he was basically saying no one cared what he did as long as he did something. Even if he burnt down the White House, which you know, or burnt down the Capitol building, or burnt down DC for that matter, is what he's implying, that no one would care as long as he's doing something. Um, so a lot of people just didn't really mind FDR doing these things, like getting a bunch of liberal professors together to try to shape progressive policy, so long as he did something. Um, they were desperate for a change in the Great Depression. Um, other things that FDR did in his first hundred days, which we'll talk about in detail in a little bit, um, he passed a lot of what were referred to as ABCs, um, but a lot of acronym uh, projects like the TVA, the CCC, PWA, WPA, CWA, um, and the NIRA, NRA, 
FDIC. So basically, um, he did a lot of these things during his first 100 days, as well as passing regulations on Wall Street. Um, he legalized beer, which, by the way, um, he wasn't allowed to do. There was a prohibition. And he legalized beer. And then, shortly thereafter, um, the the um, prohibition is, is ended. But um, it, he, he acted without constitutional authority, which you're going to see seems to be a trend. Um, all right, so let's talk about the ABCs of the New Deal. Um, FDR's idea basically was make government programs that give people jobs and pump money into the economy so that people will have money to spend and help industry. It seems like a good idea, but it never really works out because you end up spending, as a government, a lot of money on bureaucracy. But anyway, let's talk about these um, ABCs. So one of the ABCs is the CCC. Um, it's the Civilian Conservation Corps. I'll give you a second to write that out. The Civilian Conservation Corps, C-O-R-P-S. Um, and this was where young unmarried men, you couldn't be a married man to work in here, um, did conservation projects like um, you would plant trees, do soil restoration, uh, reforestation, things like that. Um, and they ended up doing a lot of things like uh, state park work, national park work. Uh, you can go to parks and see some stuff built by the CCC. Um, another thing that he made was the PWA, or the Public Works Administration, and um, this employed unemployed people to do things like build school buildings, courthouses, federal buildings, airplanes, um, hospitals, bridges, pretty much any kind of public work um, that needed to be made uh, was made through the PWA. Um, there's, there was the CWA, which is the Civil Works administration. Um, they built roads, playgrounds, things of that nature. Um, the WPA, the Works Progress Administration. By the way, if, if I'm going a little too quickly for you, um, you can see a lot of these are on page 497 in your textbook. Um, so I'll just let you know. You can review that later if you need to. Um, but the WPA basically employed anybody to do anything. Because um, a lot of people didn't want to just get a handout. Um, a lot of people were ashamed that they were unemployed. And they didn't just want to get a government handout to do nothing. So really this is kind of like Hoover's idea of work relief. Um, and so the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, just employed people to do any kind of job um, so that they were getting a check but it wasn't a handout. Um, okay, now, a major thing we should talk about is the AAA, not AAA like the American Automobile Association, but the Agricultural Adjustment Act. Um, now, this was something that FDR passed in 33, 1933, and it offered subsidies or payments to farmers to just plow under their crops because there was such a big year. Now think about this, people are starving, right? People in America are starving during the Great Depression. And the AAA paid farmers to plow under crops because it would have it really would have damaged prices. If you flood the market with something, prices fall. And if prices fall for goods, then the farmers that are trying to sell them don't make any money. So it took government money, tax money from people that were working, and paid it to farmers to just plow under wheat, cotton. I mean, I know you don't eat cotton, um, but cotton could be sold. Uh, to slaughter pigs and just basically leave them rotting in the field. Um, and that was supposed to keep prices under control so that um, everybody ended up making out. The farmers that didn't do that, that ended up selling their goods, there were fewer pigs in the market, so you know supply and demand. So um, supply and demand adjusts prices. If there's a huge supply and not as much demand, the price drops. Uh, so anyway, this helped control prices. Um, but it wasn't necessarily a good thing overall. Um, the NRA, not National Rifle Association, the National Rifle Association actually existed uh, for almost 50 years before FDR's NRA. Um, and this is the National Recovery Administration. 
Um, and it, its goal was to encourage, almost to force employers um, to pay certain wages, um, to employ a certain number of people, and um, you're going to see this is going to be opposed very strongly um, because the employers are the ones losing out. And actually, um, if you have to pay a certain wage, you can't employ as many people, so the people that could have been employed were losing out as well because there just weren't as many jobs available. Um, TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority. Um, it still exists today. Um, it was started by FDR, and it kind of proves the point that Ronald Reagan made, which was the closest thing to eternal life on Earth is a government program. Um, the TVA was basically people were paid to work in the Tennessee Valley area um, to do things like building dams, um, and it helped people that were struggling in that area, and it still exists today to take care of the things that were built, uh, but it wasn't it's not as necessary now. It's just a government program that's nice that gets people a paycheck. Um, FDIC. This is something interesting that hadn't existed. The banks were closing. And before FDIC was established, um, which I don't know if any of you know what it is. I, if I were there, I'd ask and wait for an answer. But since this is pre-recorded, I can't do that. Um, but the FDIC, it's the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So it's, it's a corporation that's established to insure your deposits in the bank. So if you put money in the bank right now and the bank goes bankrupt, the FDIC will reimburse you for the money you lost. Before this, though, if you had money in the bank and the bank went bankrupt, you lost your money. Well, the FDIC originally insured deposits for $2,500. So if you had up to $2,500 in the bank account, when the bank went bankrupt, you'd get all that money back. But if you had more than $2,500 in the bank, you lost the surplus. Now, the rate was raised later. It's been raised many times. Um, right now, I don't know if anyone knows um, what the rate is, but um, it was $100,000 before 2008. It's now been raised at $250,000. Big jump from the $2,500 that was the original value uh, when FDR passed it. Uh, but anyway, the FDIC actually, it was pretty successful at restoring confidence in the banking industry because you no longer had to worry about what happens if the bank goes bankrupt because then you get your money back. Um, the only thing that would really cause a problem with the FDIC is if most of the banks in the country went out of business and there just wasn't enough money to pay everyone back. But usually, uh, only a small number in the grand scheme of banks went out of business anyway during the Great Depression. Okay, um, so I'm going to stop this video here and then we'll move on to the opposition to FDR's New Deal.